Overcast days, terrible, terrible for real estate. They make your exteriors look blah. Great for skin tones, great for portraits, not for real estate. Please follow this tutorial where I take you from Lightroom, quick fixes, then to Photoshop, pop in the blue sky, make it pop, and sell the fake. All right, let's get started with my workflow on how I replace skies nice, quick, and easy using Lightroom and Photoshop. So all my editing starts in, once I import all my photos into Lightroom. And you can see here, I have a combination of aerial and ground shots of the exterior. It was a blah day, overcast, and lots of us get this quite often. So we have to know as real estate photographers how to edit this to make these photos pop. So I've got them all somewhat in sequence of how I would deliver them, but basically some of them need work and some of them don't. So the first step I do, I have a Lightroom preset I apply for my exteriors. That gets me about 90% of the way there. I go through them, do some cropping and tweaking and just light tweeting and tuning, adjusting exposure before I take in Photoshop. So next, once that's done, I pick my, photos, then I'm going to be adjusting the sky, shift click, control click, the one I don't want. So these particular ones, you can see I have eight selected. I'm going to have to edit eight in Photoshop. So I'm using a Windows PC here. So I'm going to go edit in Photoshop. And basically what I want to do is take all these into Photoshop. I'm going to apply the sky replacements and make them pop. So I've already done Lightroom adjustments, so I do want those. So edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So now we go edit. And now we wait for all these images to load into Photoshop. Now we have all our photos loaded in Photoshop and we can see them across the tabs, each one loaded separately. And now we want to do the sky replacements. So we go under edit, sky replacement. Here the toolbox is loaded and we can see that we have our skies. It selected the last one I've used, so I can look here. So I'm using skies that I've used for a while. And basically these are blue skies I saw on my website, shootingrealestate.ca. These work amazing because I shot them on a 1635, nice and wide. I shot them and they're all nicely colored. They all look the same. So what's important, like here we got eight shots we're gonna be editing. And through a day, I might do five shoots. So eight times five, you got 40 sky replacements to do in an ugly day. So you don't want the same sky in every photo because as people are flipping through them quick, it's like, oh, the sky stays the same every time. But so what's good is having different skies for different angles and work with that. So we're gonna just pick this first one and you click up here to get out of this pickup box. So what I do right away, I pull down the fade edge. So what you'll see is this little halo along the roof sometimes that I just hate. So I always pull the back, the fade edge. That's basically as much as I ever do. What I love to do is output to new layers. And that is it. So if you select a different sky, you're gonna see a different preview. What you wanna keep in mind too with your sky is where the light would have been from. So I am looking north, so however the clouds would have looked that best suit that and it's just a judgment call. So I'm gonna hit okay. So now that I put it on its own layers, you're gonna see some, sometimes the sky will go bleed into items up here. So all I do is go into the actual mask. I hit B for brush, and then I'm gonna adjust the size and make it a little bigger. So I'm using the square brackets to make it bigger and smaller. I love using a hard brush making sure it's nice and hard and then whoops x to switch your blend mode to erase and we're just taking that little bit of sky that was in this top peak you're going to find that every now and then it'll bleed into the peaks and in winter it is a bugger because you have snow up there and the clouds will they'll pick the white and that snow so that's all i do you can flatten the layers do whatever you want but basically i'm done with that image so i'm going to go on to the next one 
So this one's got a little blue in it. I would probably put some blue from Photoshop or from Lightroom, sorry. So now we're gonna go edit sky replacement. So even if there's some blue, it looks ugly. It's not a lot of life in it. it, it Photoshop's smart enough to take the existing sky and now we can replace it with something more dramatic. So this is the same sky we used from last time. So I'm gonna just switch it up, switch a different sky. You can use the flip here. So you can flip the sky. What looks better, what feels better, what do you feel the light was hitting those clouds? I'm just gonna move this over, check it over. Looks good, it got everything. There's a little bit in this window, so we can click preview. You can see it even put it in the windows right in here. Again, output to new layers, that's very important. And now we pick that mask again, hit B for brush, and I'm just gonna go over this edge. I can see a little blue in there. Whoops, I went a little too far. So I'm just holding shift, shift clicking. Pick the first one, shift click, and then you make a big line. There might be more. I'm just gonna keep this quick and simple, and that's it for that one. Let's go to the next one, see what we got. So these are pretty simple skies in these ones. Let's try to find a little more, something more complicated. Here we got some trees. So again, edit, sky replacement. I wanna see how Photoshop does with all these trees. And my experience is, unless it's filled in a lot of this empty space, you it'll take care of everything pretty well. Photoshop and their AI is amazing. So. Again, that fade edge, you'll notice it as I move right in here, you'll see how it changes up. Click. I just want to pull that down. I want to flip this cloud. I don't mind the way it looked when I started. I might try a different one. So these ones are more wispy at the top. And that looks good. So again, with this one, you really can see, if you look in this area, you can really see how the cloud went over it. So I'm picking the mask again, B for brush. I'm gonna use the square brackets to make my brush bigger. There's a little bleed over, I don't have a nice square hard brush. Hard brush has that nice circle, which is what you want instead of faded. So there's some up in this, up in this area. You can see it on the eaves trough, so I'm gonna use a square bracket down, this left bracket to make it smaller. I'm just gonna use it to bring out this eave trough. There's some a little here. And just zoom back out. And that looks pretty good. So again, oh, there might be whatever this thing is, I don't know. And you can see this. After I had zoomed in, I didn't see this. So and that's it for that one. That looks pretty good. Next image. Same thing we got with trees. Here we just want to do this area. So how is sky replacement going to do with this one? Let's go edit sky replacement. So because the house is facing to the left, I have some of these where you can see the, it's like the wind is blowing them a certain direction than clouds. So sometimes I just flip them around and just, it's more aesthetic. So it's following the lines up there and leading your eyes towards the house. Turn back the pledge. So this is where you really see it. Look along that house. I adjust that fade edge and you just see how much it fades. So I just pull it back. I don't want Photoshop to do too much. Okay, again, pick the mask, brush. I'm just gonna pick the first spot, shift click. Pick the first spot, shift click over here on the eave trough. Might be a little in here and that's pretty good. Another trick that I like doing is going back to the background layer. So you want to sell the fake. So we've gone over a few here that basically in putting in the skies, making them look good. And how do we sell the fake a little more? So there is no sun, there is no light. It's kind of a flat light, which is great for portraits, but let's go with how, what would we do here? So what I'm doing is I'm going into the brush over here the dodge brush. What dodge does is add brightness. So what I'm picking is mid-tones. I'm using a soft brush. I'm using the square brackets and I'm just tapping randomly where I want the eye to lead. Where do I want to add some brightness that light might have been. Brighten some things up quick. 
and just in the midtones. And I'm just picking the background later, so it shouldn't affect the clouds. I'm just adding a little spark to it. And it's just leading your eye into here where you want to view it. So same thing, we'll go back to this shot. We've already put the sky in. We're going to go to the background layer. We pick Dodge. It's a little nice big sky, nice soft brush. So the sun should be hitting the top here, right? It depends where it is that day. You just work your magic. I'm adding some light and just to the midtones, and that's how we make it pop. Basically selling the fake is what I like calling it. So we added skies, we got rid of any masked problems, put a little dodge on the midtones with a nice soft brush, add some light into it, bring your eye in. So it's basically about composition and bring your eye to the subject. So brightening up your house, your exterior, whatever you're focusing on, and it's as easy as that. And that's how I do my sky replacement. After that, I save all these, I close out, I go back into Photoshop or into Lightroom and everything is ready to go. And I start working on my interiors. If you want to check out more of these sky replacements, you can go over to shootingrealestate.ca, over to my store, and there's the blue sky replacement pack. So this is a perfect pack. I've shot this on my wide angle, 16 to 35. All the skies, when you look at here, here's a sneak peek at all of them. They're all the same tonality of blue. They're diff just different shapes inside of there to fill in your frame so that you can have variety in your exterior. So if you have five to 10 different exteriors, different angles. You give variety to the viewer. They, it just needs to have sky, it needs to have life. So what's great with this pack? You download it, you have a great pack to use. What you'll find with Photoshop, some of them just has one sky that, or one cloud I mean, that shows up in your photo up top and it just looks fake, too fake. So you really wanna sell the fake well. So all my images ground to see, to the top of the clouds, perfectly done. I've, because I live on the Canadian prairies, we got a lot of flat land. So I didn't have much for trees in front. So right off the horizon, these work great. So again, visit my store at shootingrealestate.ca and you can grab these skies. And there's also a video out there to help you install them. It's actually really easy with the new update. You just grab the dot sky file, drop it into Photoshop, drag and drop, and you're done. So thank you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment below and contact me if you need help. And I thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. We're sh shooting real estate. This is Scott Prokop. Thanks. Does anybody know how to change a Bloss guy in video? I shoot video too. I don't know what to do. You got any ideas? Shout me a comment below or let me know.